Here's an example of a position time graph. The graph shows the position of a remote-controlled car as a function of time. Consider that the numbers on the graph are exact and give answers with three significant figures. Describe the motion of the remote-controlled car as a function of time. What's the car's average velocity during the first 35 seconds illustrated? What is the car's average speed during the first 35 seconds illustrated? What is the car's velocity at t is equal to 10 seconds? What is the car's speed at t is equal to 10 seconds? What is the average acceleration between 15 and 20 seconds? What is the instantaneous velocity at 30 seconds? And what is the average acceleration between 30 and 35 seconds? So the first thing we need to do is to describe the motion of the remote controlled car as a function of time. Well, for the first 5 seconds, the car remains at x is equal to 2.5 meters. We can tell that because the position time graph is horizontal. From t is equal to 5 seconds to t is equal to 22 and a half seconds, the car moves backward at constant speed. You can tell that the car is moving at a constant speed because the position time graph is linear and diagonal. From t is equal to 22.5 seconds to t is equal to 27.5 seconds, the car stays at x is equal to minus 2 meters. At t is equal to 27 and a half seconds, the car moves forward again and speeds up gradually. And you can tell this because the slope of the position time graph is gradually getting steeper and steeper. Compare this to the time between 5 and 22 and a half seconds when the slope was constant, which meant that the velocity was constant. Next, we find the car's average velocity during the first 35 seconds in the picture. Average velocity is defined as displacement over time. So the final position minus the initial position over the final time minus the initial time. In this particular case, the final position of the car is minus 1.125 meters. Its initial position is 2.5 meters. The final time is 35 seconds, the initial time is 0, and we find that the average velocity is minus 0 0.104 meters per second. This makes sense because the car's final position is behind its initial position. Let's now look at the car's average speed. Well, the average speed is the distance traveled over the time. From 0 to 5 seconds, no distance was traveled. From 5 to 22.5 seconds, 4.5 meters were traveled backwards. From 22.5 to 27.5, there was no displacement. And from 27.5 to 35 seconds, there were 0 0.875 meters traveled. And so the total distance traveled, when we take the absolute value of all the displacements, is 5.375 meters. And 5.375 meters divided by 35 seconds is 15.4 centimeters per second. Next, we find the car's velocity at 10 seconds. Well, really, from 5 seconds to 22 and a half seconds, the car's velocity is the same because the slope of the position time graph is constant. So it makes sense to calculate the velocity between 5 and 22.5 seconds. The instantaneous velocity is given by the slope of the graph. Let's take as our final position x2, negative 2 meters at 22.5 seconds, and as our initial position, minus 2.5 meters at 5 seconds. The instantaneous velocity is minus 0 0.257 meters per second. The instantaneous speed is just the absolute value of the instantaneous velocity. So at 10 seconds, that is 0 0.257 meters per second. And now, what about the acceleration between 15 and 20 seconds? Well, that acceleration is 0 because the velocity is constant. The slope of the position time graph does not change between 15 and 20 seconds. The slope of the position time graph is the velocity. And if the velocity doesn't change, well, there's no acceleration. Now, the instantaneous velocity at 30 seconds is given by the slope of the position time graph at 30 seconds. 
And since at 30 seconds the position time graph is not a straight line, we are going to have to trace a tangent to the position time graph at 30 seconds and then calculate the slope. On our tangent, I've taken point P1, which is at 22 and a half seconds and at minus 2.5 meters, and I've taken point P2 at 40 seconds and at minus 1 meters and now we can calculate the slope. So negative 1 minus negative 2.5 meters divided by 40 seconds minus 22.5 seconds gives us an instantaneous velocity of 0 0.0857 meters per second at t is equal to 30 seconds. Now to find the average acceleration between 30 and 35 seconds I'm going to need the velocity at 35 seconds and so I'm going to use the same method. I'm going to trace a tangent at 35 seconds, place a point P1 at 25 seconds and minus 3 meters and a point P2 at 40 seconds and minus 0.25 meters. Then the instantaneous velocity at 35 seconds is minus 0 0.25 meters minus minus 3 meters divided by 40 seconds minus 25 seconds and that gives me 0 0.183 meters per second. It makes sense because it's larger than the velocity at 30 seconds that we found. Then to find the average acceleration between those two times we take the velocity at 35 seconds, 0 0.183 meters per second, subtract the velocity at 30 seconds, minus 0 0.0857 meters per second, divide by 35 seconds, minus 30 seconds, and that gives us an average acceleration of 0 0.0976 meters per second squared. Here is what the graph looks like with my two hand-drawn tangents. Here is the solution on two pages. These videos are the work of the Physics Department of John Abbott College and are made available under a Creative Commons license. You are free to share and remix the work, as long as you give us credit for the original work, that you do not use the work for commercial purposes, and that you share. Spread the joy of physics!